Hi people, in this video I'm gonna show you a quite solid and pretty easy Hunter Herbalism far inside Darmal East. That's right Vansia, I'm looking at you, get your butt here. Now, this farm could give you about a hundred gold per hour and I think that is, it's gonna be quite stable gold over time as well as we will just be going for herbs that will, will always be somewhere inside the instance. Uh, if we compare this to the Arcane Crystal farm where you could go 11 runs without getting anything and then you get three Arcane Crystals in a single run and even though it's very fun looting that many crystals it's also a bit frustrating that you can get basically nothing over and over and over and with this farm you're gonna get you know consistently get things uh, so here is the result from me farming for a period of time just gonna try and there we got a good image. Uh, you will always get four ghost mushrooms. There will always be four of them distributed over a number of spawns. I think there will always be four or five uh, uh, Grum's blood uh, spawns and maybe two or three dream foils and a whole number of warpwood pods. And we want to go for every single one of them. Now, as I'm going to realize, I am, um, well, I haven't resetted this instance yet, so I'm going to just pop out and do that. Uh, you will also get a chest every now and then that can contain some random funness, uh, which I think is very nice. At, uh, the gold from chest is nothing that this farm is dependent on, but it could be a surprise bonus, you know. Some randomness is often, is often fun to have. So the timer started, I've reset it, and now we go. Uh, and a run is gonna take about 10-11 minutes if you do pretty much everything you can. Uh, you can always try and go for a couple of more of these warpwood pots. Now, some of them are just gonna pop and maybe spawn Lashers, a Poison Cloud, nothing at all, or maybe Entangle you. And often, uh, you can just get sufficiently close to see whether it will open or not. And if it does open, you can just run away from it. If you wanna play it really safe, you should lay down a Explosive Trap before each pod, uh, so that if you do get Lashers, you can just run them into the Explosive Trap. Now, there are... I think maybe four or five ghost mushrooms spawn in this room, but there's, you know, there could technically be four inside here. Uh, it's not impossible, but it's gonna be very uncommon. And there is this patrol, there is a stealth mob over there in that corner, and there is also a stealth mob right here. Sometimes there is a spawn there, sometimes there's one there, sometimes there's both of them at once. And this is something you need to be aware of inside this instance, that there are several levels of this, and... Uh, you know, there's no way of knowing if that ghost mushroom is there, there, or maybe above us, or even below us again. Um, so you need to be aware of that, and eventually you're gonna learn which, well, which of these icons refer to which spawn, but it can be a bit confusing at the beginning. Uh, and what you wanna do is just work with ex uh, explosive trap, with freezing trap and scatter shots and uh, wind clip a lot. And... Whenever you're running for the herbs, just grab whatever warpwood pods you can on the way. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the exact value of herbs on my server at the end of the run, but currently I'll just say that the ghost mushrooms are about 1.7 gold, the grump's blood are about 80 silver, the dream foils are about 95 silver, and the um, run some tuber surprise is 10 silver per, per carrot, basically, of uncooked and about 20 silver if cooked. So hopefully you have a cook that can fix these for you and then you can double the value of them. In this long chamber or whatever you want to call it, corridor here, there is a stealth patrol going back and forth. Um, just be aware that you don't run head, run head first into him and get dazed. He can also apply a poison for 30 seconds that slows you a lot. Um, you need to be aware of critters because they can trigger your traps so be aware of that uh, i should have just frost nova no i mean frost trapped him and went for the pod uh, in this room there can be a chest spawn it's either gonna be there in that corner or it's gonna be there or it's gonna be over by that fire uh, you also have this spawn uh, or patrol going back and forth throughout the room something like that maybe you have one patrol around each pillar as well and the stealth guy will often go out about there and then back in. So there are a few things to keep in mind, but nothing special. Um, and, you know, in situations like these, just frost trap and freeze him there. If he would have been ranged, you would have had to line of sight at him. But this is nothing special. Now, if you would have gotten a chest 
and that corner there and it wasn't locked, what you would have done is made your way to the second level in this room up where you have the boss. You would have mind controlled or eyes of the beast at your pets, ran down and pulled that pack and then asked your pet to come back. And that way you would have pulled the mobs away which would have allowed you to jump down and feign death over by the chest and pick it up as you can't pick up chests while in combat. And this is where you would have gone up. Now when going down be aware that there is a stealth patrol just walking up and down these stairs so I'm ready finger in number three for the frost trap and there we go. Nothing special at all. Um, I am using Freezing Trap and Feign Death a lot. I do have the talent for Improved Feign Death, but I don't have the talent for Improved Traps. And I think that there is basically just a 1% chance of missing left inside this instance and um, or resisting both uh, Feign Death and Traps. But even if you do get a resist or a uh, resisted trap, you can probably just face tank them until you can get away from them. Now this pack you have to aggro and then feign death here or you can just keep going and feign death over there. Uh, there is one pack there and a lasher, a big boy lasher there. So it's important that you stand at this corner and then go straight for that corner as if you do that you will not aggro anything. There we go. Now if you are sufficiently quick you might have a few minutes to kill this boss but be aware that he is tricky and annoying and if you die, it's gonna be trying to fight bosses in here. Uh, there is a chest, as you can see it is not locked, so I'm gonna show you how to deal with the chests. Uh, and there is also a herb there, which we're also gonna go for. And as you could see, I just got sufficiently close, it popped, and the lasher spawned, but I didn't aggro them. And that is ideally how you wanna do it. Sometimes you have a stealthed guy, just a second, over there in that corner, and you also have a stealthed guy patrolling the stairs. So be aware of that when you're approaching. Nothing there this time. We're just gonna make our way up the stair. Make sure to trap him. Sometimes you also have a spawn here. And whenever you're going for the spawn or you're pulling mobs up, make sure to always be on this ledge. And summon your pet on top of this ledge. Because you will see later that my pet, just by running down here, will pull that pack later on. There are always a total of four ghost mushrooms in a run. Uh, obviously the uh, Grump's Blood and the Dreamfall can vary quite a lot more because you can get one to three but you only get one ghost mushroom per spawn and there is always four spawn inside the instance. So we summon the pet, make sure to have it on top of the ledge. We're gonna jump down. Uh, you can pop your run fast thingy dash which you kind of need to have in your pets as otherwise the mobs are gonna catch up with it and kill it. Pull this pack and make sure to really damage them before you pull them as the uh, aggro range for a pet is very inconsistent. And now still with dash on I just run away from all the mobs, they chain pull each other and it's gonna make its way up here. It's almost sufficiently far away to despawn there, that wouldn't really have been a negative thing as the mobs would just have chased after you instead. Um, but we just wait up here now. As you can see here. The pet is not running up on the ledge, it pulled a imp uh, and it's gonna get killed anyway but just be aware of that. And so now the mobs are coming back, it's at 38 now and you're gonna have almost 25 seconds to just do whatever you need to do. Uh, there I grab the herb and we're just gonna feign death and then take the chest. Uh, now chests can contain a lot of gold in a in, uh, form of maybe mountain silver sages or blind weeds or even a weapon green weapon that you can disenchant for up to three eternal essences meaning a chest can give you 15 gold not too uncommon uh, but it's not something that you should rely on it's just a nice random bonus here and there this corner is safe by the way so after you feign death you can rest your pet there and just wait for them to reset uh, we're now almost done with this room or well, we are done with this room, but we're gonna make our way to the big uh, courtyard. Uh, there can also be a stealth one in this corner. Gonna go for this warpwood pod. Uh, scatter shot him and then just, I think, wing clip this guy. Okay, now there can be a dream foil there. Uh, but there is also a warp rod right in front of it. So you need to make sure to open it and eventually kill the lashers before you go for the dream foil. And if there is a dream foil, you gotta make sure to approach it from this side, from the rocks, and then just slightly get sufficiently close, you know, just quickly tap A 
uh, or whichever movement key you're using very slightly to stand at the maximum distance to the herb while you pick it, as the danger with that herb is the nearby leisure pack, but it can be done. Now, if I would have just ran straight away from that uh, pack, I would probably have avoided them, but it's probably good that I show you what to do if it spawns. Uh, so, as you can see, my feign death is currently on cooldown, so what I do is I summon my pets, I go Aspect of the Monkey, and if you have Deterrence, use it. Um, and just kill them off. If you want to play it safe, you should always use a explosive trap before you open this, as it will greatly it will greatly speed up the killing of the lashers. Um, so that's gonna be nice. And now they have been killed off, and they can drop some nice things. For example, the serrated petal, uh, which I just looted but you didn't see, is worth I think 60 silver. It's a grey item that you just vendor. Uh, this is one of the safe spots in this room. Be aware of that. And there are, I think, four patrols of treants going back and forth everywhere. Uh, all of them cross the road. Well, except for the one behind me. Or they do actually cross the road. Never mind. And maybe if you aren't used to this dungeon, you should just watch them to learn how they patrol. Uh, all along this wall is safe besides, you know, roughly where the left pack goes down to the wall. And there are a whole bunch of warpwood pots as well. And we're gonna speed up a bit. There is really nothing special uh, left to show you. Another safe spot is the tree right there is a safe spot. You want to be a bit careful with this one as rarely it will entangle root you and if you don't have feign death available uh, the patrol will walk straight into you and that could kill you so be aware of that. And we speed up a bit more. Pick up the final herb here, just use your uh, freezing trap, pull the mob into it. Obviously don't face your back to it and don't have Aspect of the Sheet already. And be aware that Deathlasher deal magical damage, so you can't face tank them as long as you could face tank other mobs. And this was pretty much the run, 10 minutes in. Uh, and what we've gotten now is, even if you don't remember what I had prior to this, let's see where I opened my bag, there it is. Um, we have, I've earned basically 20 runtime tubers, 4 dream foils, 4 uh, grumps blood, and 4 um, ghost mushrooms. Now there is one spawn that you can take, and I'm just quickly going to show you it. Um, now I think the issue is that at least as a Tauron, if you use a uh, character size affecting uh, thing, then you're either gonna be too small to reach it, and if you don't use it, you're gonna be too far, or you're gonna be sufficiently big to reach it, but you will be uh, so big that you also pull these. So sadly, if you get a ground spot here, I mean, you could use your pet to pull them away, which is probably what you should do, but at least for this run, I'm just leaving it. As you can see, you still have a minute until it's 12 minutes, so just do whatever you can to get some extra gold out of this run. Okay, and this was basically the run. As you can see, it's very quick, it's very easy. Uh, there are some details that I haven't gone over, such as all the herb spawns, uh, all maybe not all the patrols, and how you uh, deal with uh, moving, removing mobs from a chest. But in any place where there can spawn a chest, there will also be a second level to which you can pull the mobs either with your bow or with your pet. Uh, and then that could buy you enough time to loot the chest. Uh, what we're gonna do now is quickly look at what you can do with these Fornling Seeds, as they are actually not entirely worthless. Uh, and then we're quickly gonna look at how much the herbs are worth, and thus how much gold I earn from these 11 minutes. Okay, so whenever your bags are full, what you can do is just run out through this entrance, and if you reset it with a reset girl like I had, then it will send you to the entrance through which you entered. Uh, now, the Lasher Seeds, Thorling Seeds, when you use it, it plates a very, very tiny Lasher on the ground that will grow for 10 seconds. And when it's done growing, it's gonna start doing a pulsating AoE nature damage effect that also taunts nearby mobs. It should start about now. Um, there we go, as you can see, as soon as he took damage, he turned around to face the Lasher. And now it can't be seen, but it deals 100 nature damage periodically, maybe every 2 seconds or 3 seconds, I think. Uh, and even though the Lasher has a 15 minutes cooldown, 
it doesn't share cooldown with any other consumable as far as I know, so it can be pretty dandy. Uh, and if your bags are full, maybe from chest trash and whatever, you can just run to your camp and sell. It's very, very close, way closer than the main entrance. And now, finally, we're just quickly going to look at how much gold we earn from those 11 minutes. Now, we picked a total of 4 Ghost Mushrooms, 5 um, Grum's Blood, 4 Dream Lashes, I mean Dream Foils, uh, and 20 Run Tom Turbers. We also got about 1.5 gold from the chest. Now, the Grum's Blood are worth 80 silver, roughly, on my server, so that means that we got 4 gold from that. The Ghost Mushrooms are worth... Just a second. About 1.7 gold, which is gonna be 6.8 gold for four of them. Dreamfoil, 96 silver, that's about four gold for four as well. And finally, the Runtom tubers, the uncooked version of these, is worth about 10 silver each, quite exact. Meanwhile, the cooked version of them is actually worth twice that. It's gonna be one gold for five. So if you can cook them, you can essentially double their value. Uh, so adding everything up and supposing that you do cook your runtime tubers, you'll be looking at 20 gold for these uh, 11 minutes. And as you know, you can do five rounds an hour, which means that you should be looking at about 100 gold per hour very consistently and reliably. And like I said before, I feel that one of the... There are basically two big benefits to this farm, or well, technically three maybe. Uh, partly you don't need mining, but you do need herbalism. Uh, but you roughly get the same gold as if you were farming the arcane crystals in here, except it's, it's way more consistent. You are gonna get roughly 20 gold every run. Uh, it's not gonna be like when you farm the crystals and you can do... 11 runs without getting a single crystal uh, and then you get three crystals from a single vein now randomness can be excuse me randomness can be very funny but it can also be very frustrating there is essentially no randomness in this uh, except where the flowers are gonna be you're always gonna get roughly what we got that run you know adding up to about 20 gold uh, it's just gonna be a matter of where these things are and also every now and then you can get a chest, and sometimes you'll get three out of all of the herb spawns, and sometimes you only get one. But overall, it's gonna be, you're always gonna get something, and it's always gonna be there. Uh, so, maybe not the strongest hunter farm, but it's definitely solid, and it's very easy and relaxing. You basically don't need any gear whatsoever, besides a weapon and a bow. Um, and you don't have to be on your toes all the time, for example, if you were doing Diamond North, you'd have to pay attention to all the ads, where are the eyes, uh, how are the patrols right now, what are the cooldowns, and you know, if you just get a feign death uh, that's resisted in Diamond North, then GG, the run is very likely over. So you can just relax way more, and I find it very, way easier to do this farm over time. But anyway, this was pretty much all I had to show you for this video. Um, hopefully you can park your hunter with Herbalist amounts of Diamond East, and just do a few runs every now and then. Uh, and the money will start stacking up. Uh, if you have any questions or just want to say hi to me, you, the best place to do so is probably on my stream at twitch.tv slash um, I hope you enjoyed that and if you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more videos about, well, a little bit of everything in WoW Classic. Anyway, this was all I had for this video. I'll be back soon with another video and until then, see ya!